Hello, carding students and course of sport fans. Welcome to another episode of Carding 101, um, a series where we're going to teach you some of the basics of cart driving, how to be fast, how to not get past, how to not finish last. I didn't mean to make that all rhyme, but it does. Um, our first video that we did in this series was on the racing line and some general ideas on different lines you can take, different approaches you can take to a corner. This one is going to break down specifically the braking zone, which in my opinion is probably the most important part of a corner. Um, generally we break down corners into three set parts, braking, turn in, and throttle application. And braking is the first part you get to when you get to a corner. It's the first thing you do before you get to the corner. Um, and then because of that, it kind of sets up your entire flow through the corner. So it ends up being pretty important. If you screw up the braking, you're going to probably screw up something else in the corner, and there's really no coming back from that mistake. So it's a pretty important part of the corner. And to be honest with you, I could spend an entire day just talking about braking um, and different techniques and ideas and how to apply those things. Um, my first driver lesson that I got when I was a kid um, growing up karting was when I was 13 years old or something like that and it was on braking and it was with master late breaker uh, karting legend Steve Welk and we spent the entire day at Dousman and all we did was work on braking and it was some of the best money I'd ever spent in go-karting so um, I always remember that, and I always try to, some of the lessons that he taught me, I try to apply nowadays still in my own driving and when I'm coaching other people as well. So it's a pretty big, important part of driving a go-kart fast. We're just going to go over some of the basics. We're not going to dive into super advanced techniques of any kind or, you know, braking can be very situational, you know, no corner is the same. So, um... Some things might not work in one type of corner, but they might work in another type of corner. We're not going to dive too deep into that. We're going to talk about it a little bit, but I want to just get the basics down so you kind of have a consistent base to start from when you are going to the track to practice your braking techniques. So I've got a list of uh, notes and stuff here, and then I've also got some little diagrams, and we will just kind of bounce back and forth between these um, as we go through here. But First, we'll start in the notes section. Um, and the first note that I have here is that uh, you want a firm initial brake pressure. So this is one thing that I always um, am drilling into the minds of people I'm coaching, is that firm initial brake pressure. So as we get into the braking zone, let me just scroll up to one of these braking zones here just to use this as an image for you to see. You can see we're coming to this hairpin corner here. Green is on throttle, red is braking, darker red is harder braking, yellow is rolling off the brakes, and green is rolling back to throttle. So whenever you approach a corner where there's going to be a hard braking zone, or any braking zone for that matter, even if it's a short braking zone, you want initially to be pressing the pedal nice and firm. You want to jab at those brakes right off the bat. Um, the idea here is that you're getting to the max brake pressure possible as soon as possible. In the grand scheme of things, we really want to make the braking zones as short as possible. You know, it makes sense. You want to be slowing down for the least amount of time. So we want to be getting to the maximum brake pressure as quickly as we can. Um, so that requires a firm press of the pedal right off the bat. Now, a go-kart for most of you is going to be rear brake only unless you're driving a shifter, uh, which has front brakes, you're going to be relying just on rear brakes. So the difficulty that we have when we come to braking firm initially like that is going over the brake pressure limit or going under the brake pressure limit. If we go over the limit, what happens is you, the rear tires will lock up, um, and that's not good. It can be good in some cases, but for the sake of this argument, let's just say it's not good for most cases. Um, and if you go under that brake pressure limit that you have, you're going to slow down at a slower rate and extend the braking zone. 
you're not getting full braking power. So the tires have um, a set amount of grip and traction. And when we think about grip and traction, a lot of times we're thinking about lateral grip and how well the tire grips as we go around the corner and holds us onto the track. But that same traction and grip is also being used to slow down the cart or speed up the cart. So when we go into the corner, the tires have a set amount of grip that they can handle. In other words, they have an amount of brake pressure that you can apply before they lock up. Um, so what you want to do as you go to the braking zone is you want to get to a firm press of the pedal. You want to get to 99% of the braking pressure possible right away, right off the bat. Um, if you go over that, you're going to lock up. And if you go under that, you're not going to get full braking power. Now, if you look at a data trace on your Micron of a big braking zone where the speed lines come down as you're slowing down, it's very easy to see whether or not you're getting full braking pressure. If you're going over the braking limit and you're locking up, you can see that speed trace will start to come up a little bit because you're slowing down to a slower rate. And same thing if you're under braking. If you're not braking enough, the speed trace is not a steep decrease. It's, you know, there's lumps in it or whatever where you're not getting full braking pressure. Um, the difficulty in this is that with a rear braked cart, if you lock up, there's a chance you lose control of the go-kart. So it can be kind of scary for newer drivers to go into a corner and really, really get on those brakes because they can, you know, they're afraid that they're going to lock up. Now, when I did my first coaching session, as I was talking about earlier, when I was a kid, um, we just worked on braking later and later and later and later until I got to that point where I locked the brakes up and I spun out. That's when I knew where the limit of the brakes were. So from there, all I had to do was dial it back 1% on how hard I was pushing on the brakes, and I knew I was getting to the maximum braking power. Um, one way that I like to uh, approach this is, obviously, over time, you're going to get a good feel for where that maximum brake pressure is. Um, but if you've ever read Terrence Dove's book um, about car driving, which is a fantastic book, and I'm pretty sure you can still online if you search for it just search for Terrence Dove um, he is a driver coach from the UK he is excellent he knows a ton about driving um, a ton about advanced cart driving techniques um, so in his book he talks about firing it up on the outlap which means you get on that outlap and you are warming everything up you're kind of finding the limits of the cart you know you're scrubbing your tires what I like to do on that outlap in terms of braking is I like to do a, lo a few hard lockups. So I'm getting heat into the tires, the brakes, and I'm also training my muscle memory to remember where that brake pressure point is right before the race starts. So my foot will always remember where that is. And I can go into the first corner and find the limit a lot quicker than I would be otherwise if I wasn't, you know, testing it a few times on the outlap. Um, so that's one thing that you might want to try. Um, so as I said before too, you want to make the braking zones as short as possible. You want to spend as little time as possible slowing down. Um, and I refer to that as braking efficiency. Um, if you're more efficient on the brakes, meaning you get to that limit sooner, you will slow down faster. You'll make the braking zone shorter and then we can brake later and we can get on the throttle earlier. Um, so it's pretty important to get to that braking point where just before the tires lock up, what you're kind of looking for is you want that you want to get hard on the brakes. You get that tire just to chirp, just to chirp a little bit. You listen for it, and you can kind of feel it in the wheel and in the cart. How the attitude of the cart changes as the rears almost lock up, and you get a little bit sideways. And right when that happens, you want to anticipate it so that you get that little chirp, and then you roll your left foot right off the brake pedal, half a percent or one percent, just enough to keep it from locking up and then you hold that braking pressure until you get to the turn in point. Um, and that's going to give you that maximum braking power through the whole braking zone. Um, so with that, let's just dive into some of these different braking techniques and we'll come back to those notes because I think it's important that we take a look at some of these diagrams and understand what we're looking at here. So there's two main braking techniques um, that everybody kind of relies on in a cart. Um, there's the 
there's what most people would call straight line breaking, which is a more classic um, technique, something that was used more uh, in a lower horsepower setting or a lower grip setting, stuff like that, but still is relevant today. And then there is also trail breaking, um, which is involving, it, some people have different definitions of what trail breaking is, but to me trail breaking is you start to trail the brakes a little bit into the turn-in phase. So let's take a look at straight line braking first, because this one's a little bit easier and it's probably what most people are more familiar with. Um, and if you can master this, you're on your way to a pretty consistent, quick driving technique. So. Um, if we look at this straight line braking, so we're coming to this hairpin. You're at full throttle right here. You get to your braking point, which is this red spot here. Hard initial brake pressure. And as you get to the braking zone, you're still hard on those brakes just before lockup. And then before you get to the turn-in point, you're rolling off the brakes in this yellow zone here. So you're coming off the brakes before you get to the turn-in. You start to turn in, and as you're turning in, you're applying throttle. Um, you're not necessarily at full throttle right here in the beginning of the corner, but you do want to be to full throttle if possible before the apex in most cases. So what are the advantages of straight line braking? Well, for one, the cart is going to remain more stable. Um, and this is because you're braking in a straight line. You're not inputting any steering input into the cart as you're braking. Remember we talked about how um, your tires have a set amount of traction amount of grip available and that grip has to be used for lateral grip to keep you down on the track when you're turning and it also has to be used to slow the cart down so if you're using all that grip available in the tire to just slow down in a straight line the cart is going to be more stable because you're not inputting anything else and asking more of the tires so you're not turning at all while you're braking and asking more of the tires um, so it tends to be easier to drive a little bit more consistently if you're doing straight line braking like this. Um, and another positive of it is you get all your braking done right here before the corner. So in some cases you're able to get to the throttle a little bit earlier and drive through the corner. And we always want to be to the throttle as early as possible for the most part because that's going to extend your straightaway. You're going to carry more speed down the straightaway the earlier you can get to the throttle. Um, so I find this to be a little bit more beneficial for faster corners or corners where there's shorter braking zones because in cases like that, you're not off the throttle for that long. You're not braking for that long. Um, and the key in those situations is to really be back to the throttle almost immediately. So in those situations, it's a little bit more helpful to get the cart slowed down and then go right back to throttle before you get to the apex. Um, so that is, you know, more beneficial for faster corners or where there's shorter braking zones. Um, the second technique that we'll talk about is trail braking. So trail braking is a little bit more advanced, um, and it can have a little bit more penalty if you're making mistakes when you're doing it. Because what trail braking does, as you can see here, you're braking a little bit later and you're dragging the brakes or holding the brakes a little bit through the turn-in phase, maybe even up to the apex point depending on the corner. Um, so you can see this little red dotted line here is the, re is the braking point from the other corner just to show you that in trail braking in general you're able to brake a little bit later because you're braking into the corner a little bit instead of just in a straight line. So what are the issues with trail braking? Well like we talked about in straight line braking the tires have a finite amount of grip that they can provide. With trail braking, you're asking those tires to both slow you down and you're going to be asking them to help you turn the cart a little bit too. So this can cause the cart to be a little bit more unstable and a little bit easier to upset. Because as you drive into the corner, you've got the cart all loaded up on the brakes and now you're going to put wheel into the cart. So it requires a really delicate balance of finding how much wheel you can put into the cart balancing that load with the load of the braking um, and, and how the whole cart is loaded up as a spring. Um, we talk about the cart being a spring. As you go into the corner, you load that spring up, and if you upset the spring or anything like that, the cart's going to snap. So in trail braking, it's a little bit easier to do that. 
um, because you're asking a lot of the tires, you're asking a lot of the chassis as you drive the cart into the corner. Um, conversely to that though, this can help the cart flex and lift the inside rear wheel um, because you are putting a bunch of load on the front of the cart as you're braking hard into the corner and then turning the wheel. So the cart is going to be loaded up on the nose and it's going to want to lift harder because it's flexed up harder. So it could be beneficial in getting the cart to work a little bit better if you're struggling with that. Um, some more downsides to this. It is harder on the front tire wear because you tend to use the front tires a little bit to slow the cart down. So as you're turning into the corner, it's really easy while you're still braking for those front tires to scrub speed off as you go into the corner. So this can be kind of abusive to the front tires over the course of a run if you're trail braking really hard for every corner. Um, the positives, though, is that this does allow you to brake later because you are braking into the corner. You're not just straight line braking some of your braking is being done into the turn-in phase. So it does allow you to brake a little bit deeper. Um, and because of that, um, it's you know kind of what you're going to have to do when you're overtaking somebody in an out-braking maneuver into a corner like this, is you're going to have to trail brake a little bit probably. Um, another note to go along with that, it might possibly allow you um, or not allow you to get on the throttle as early as you like because you do have to carry the braking into the corner a little bit. Um, people who are really good at trail braking are really good at feeling the limit of the tires. So you go into the corner, you can feel the limit when you can start to roll off the brakes and when you can roll back onto the throttle. So with all of this braking, trail braking and straight line braking, you want to be on the brakes hard and as you come off the brakes you want to be applying throttle you always want to have the cart loaded a little bit. That's going to keep that inside rear wheel off the ground and help the cart stay sprung up off the track and roll through the corner better. Um, so in general, trail braking is kind of better for tighter corners where there's a big braking zone because what this is going to do is it's going to help you make up a lot of time under braking because you're braking later than a straight line breaker would. So in a long braking zone, this adds up and you can drive into the corner deeper and you're going to make up more time. The trick is to not overload the tires or overload the cart or the chassis as you turn into that corner. Um, so it can be a little bit more difficult. Um, but with both of these techniques, as with anything in go-karting, one thing is not going to be the answer for every corner. Um, a lot of times we talk about complete drivers, um, and those are drivers who are very good, very fast. And they're fast across a bunch of different scenarios, a bunch of different conditions, and on a variety of different tracks, different corners. And the reason they're good is because they master all of these techniques. So they're very good at straight line braking. They know exactly how late they can brake before they have to turn the cart, when to get off the brakes, and when to start turning the cart. But they're also very good at trail braking and they know exactly how much they can load the tires, how deep they can brake into the corner without upsetting the go-kart, and what corners they can apply those two different techniques in. Um, so it, it's, it's not a case of mastering one of these things is the way to go. You kind of want to be working on both of them. But a good technique to start off with working on your braking is probably to try to master straight line braking, get consistent at that, and then start to see how hard you can push into the corner with trail braking. Um, and that's going to kind of, you know, round out your skill set and make you good across a bunch of different corners. Um, and then back to our notes here. Um, so like we mentioned, if you go over that braking limit and you lock up, that might look cool. You know, we see a lot of pictures online or videos online of carts that are totally sideways, locked up in the braking zone. Looks awesome when the driver's right on the edge of control like that. But it's probably going to slow you down in most cases. Like I said, if you go over that limit, you're not getting full brake power anymore. The tires are sliding instead of gripping into the track to slow you down. So you're actually extending the braking zone. Um, like I mentioned, you kind of want it to be controlled where it's one firm jab of the brakes where you get that chirp of the rear tires, but you don't want a full lockup. Um, in some situations, a lockup like that can help rotate the cart or 
Um, it can be good when overtaking, when you really have to push past the limit of the braking zone to get next to the guy and claim the corner. Um, situations like that, a lockup might be okay, but it's not generally something you want to do because it's going to overheat the tires. It's going to be hard to be consistent when you're doing it like when you're braking like that. Um, but there are scenarios where a big lockup or a slight lockup can be beneficial. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique. Um, and then, like we talked about, knowing where the braking limit is also super important with overtaking because you kind of need to know how hard you can press on the brakes, how deep you can go into the corner before you hit lockup when you're next to another cart. You, the last thing you want to do is go too hard into the corner, realize you're past the braking limit, lock up, and then bounce off the cart on the outside of you and have a wreck. So it's important to know where that brake limit is and kind of modulate the pedals as you go through the braking event to make sure you're, you're playing right on that limit when you're overtaking somebody so you're not getting the cart out of shape as you're next to somebody. Um, like we talked about a little bit earlier too, in general you kind of want to have one input per corner for each of your, for your hands and each of your feet. So you go to the corner, you hit to that braking point, and you want one pedal or one press of the brake pedal for braking, and then off the brakes, one press to the throttle, and one turn in. Anytime that you're making more than one input for the corner, you're upsetting the cart and you're unloading that spring of the chassis. So if you go into the corner and you're jabbing the brakes a few times, first of all, you're just not getting the most efficient braking power. You're extending the braking zone. And if you start doing that when you're turning in or you're trail braking, you're going to upset the cart because you're putting a bunch of load in and out of the cart. And as we keep talking about, the cart is a spring. If you keep loading and unloading the spring, it's going to snap and bounce, and you're just going to get a bunch of handling issues. Um, so, like, especially with trail braking, it's important that you want one input. So you want that one brake input, and you want that one steering input. Because as you get into the apex, if you've got all that load in the cart from braking and turning, any additional input is really going to be amplified. Um, so you want to make sure you're kind of keeping one input, scrubbing as little speed as possible, and keeping the cart as stable as possible. Um, so some longer corners or double apex corners might not have um, like one steady braking input. You might have to modulate the brakes a little bit or the throttle to go through these corners. One example of this would be the horseshoe at Newcastle which would be that double right-hander before the cell tower corner. That's a long, high-grip double apex that tightens on the exit. So through that corner, you kind of have to modulate how much brake pressure or how much throttle you're applying through that corner to keep the cart loaded through that unusual uh, complex of apexes. Um, so it's just going to be something where you need to learn where that brake limit is, where the tire limit is, and where your steering inputs and how they affect those limits. Um, the last two things here is dragging the brakes while maintaining throttle. In 90% of the cases, you want to be on one pedal at a time. You don't want to be on both pedals at the same time. If you're dragging the brakes, it's going to put you know extra heat through the entire drive system. The clutch is going to get hotter. The brakes are going to get hotter. Um, and it's just the way it loads the cart is a little bit different than if you're on one pedal. Um, so for most cases, you don't want to be dragging the brakes. You don't want to be um, having both pedals on at the same time. Um, but there are going to be some instances, fast corners, really fast corners, where it's not worth it to lift off the throttle. Maybe you just drag the brakes a little bit going through that corner just to keep the cart on the track. There are very few instances where that would apply, but it does apply in some places. It's generally going to be a faster corner or a corner where you're not going to have to slow down too much. You know, if you've got a tight corner and then a corner right after it, that second corner after it, you might not need to slow down that much. So you might be able to just drag the brakes a little bit and keep your foot in the gas and roll through there with your revs up. Um, and then my final point is just to reiterate that braking is very important. Um, like I said, it's the beginning of the corner. It sets up everything that happens in the rest of the corner. So nailing your braking point is super important. It's you got to find a mark on the track, you know, you got to develop that feeling so that you're braking in the same spot every time. 
that you're applying the same brake pressure every time, that you're being consistent with all that. And if you're consistent with that, the rest of the corner is likely to be pretty consistent too. It's going to make it easier to run consistent laps, and it's going to make it easier to know where the limits of the card are. Um, so yeah, that's kind of braking summed up in a pretty basic overview. Um, if you have other questions on braking, feel free to reach out, email me or message me, and I'll be happy to take a look at what you got and see if I can help you out in any way. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or cool or interesting in any way, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your karting buddies. And check out the rest of my channel for more cool karting videos just like this.